Now this stuff, this is the stuff where I'm gonna have to learn myself what I'm doing. I've got two rate controllers on the machine, one controlling the anhydrous system, the nitrogen, and one controlling the dry fertilizer coming out of the back tank, which is the phosphorus and the potash. I believe I want the deer rate controller here, which is the nitrogen on this screen. And then I'm gonna control the other two, the dry furt, over here. But that one is a gutless computer, so there is no control. It's just a monitor, I think. Can I change things on there? Yes, okay. I like what you've done here. Did you get it all cleaned up? Yep. yep. All of it? All, All of it. it. No. Yeah. We're waiting for the millennials to show up. Well, the inside of the dryer is probably dirty, too. It's full of corn and all. Yeah, but you can still get in and clean the columns. Okay. We'll get on that right now. <laughs> yeah. Those guys just finished shoveling. Sounds like everything that was left underneath the dryer until I get in and clean it out. And Dad's out blowing off the combine already. This fall just keeps getting easier for me. It's actually pumping. A little chilly when you stand in the wind. Yeah, it is. Yeah. We got that hose mounted up in there and we struggled a little bit with the ends, but I had to take off here because I gotta go get my new ride. Are you excited about the new pickup that I got for you? Pumped. I am too doesn't have air conditioning. No. No, so you'll have to just stay out of it. It's fine. What, what year did they invent air conditioning in vehicles? You don't know? <laughs> like a kitten at a milk pail. Made the three mile drive home. So far, no issues. I knew this truck was solid. What do you think? I like it. You like it? It's what do you girls think? Good. Good. Left Oliver. Yeah. Whoa. <laughs> <laughs> it's all. got 900 horsepower. <laughs> you no, it's I, I'm slam kidding. on the gas. Yeah, but it might when no. I'm done with it. Hit it. Don't. No, I'm not going to hit it on the rocks. On the gravel road? Uh, little, what little about bit. the field? Yeah. <laughs> never seen crank windows no on it? semis all got no. And our old Ranger. Yeah. And our old Ranger? And our new Ranger does. Yeah. yeah. It's got all the amenities that every 75 Scottsdale 20 had. What do you think of my new wheels? Pretty nice pickup, isn't it? We're going to unhook this truck now because tomorrow this truck is going to go pick up a fertilizer tender trailer from the co-op so that we can get that strip killer going hopefully over the weekend. Tomorrow's Sunday, so hold it. We are done for the day. I'm gonna pull this out just so we can shut that shed door and then in the morning, I'll grab that uh, truck. We'll go get some fertilizer, work on this, work on tillage. We're reaching the end, we're getting there. After these messages, we'll be right back. Simply Safe is an easy to use, totally customizable home security system that focuses equally on the most up to date tech and reliable relationship focused service team. You're able to design a system that's best fit for your space, and it will ship directly to your doorstep. On our farm and in our home, we use Simply Safe sensors to cover every window, room, and door. Might need a drill bit. Plus, lots of great extras like water sensors, smoke detectors, and HD cameras. Yep. They've also launched a new wireless outdoor security camera. Very scary, Didge. The interactive monitoring service will call the police or fire department if it's alerted to anything. Visit simplysafe.com backslash millennial farmer to learn more and to get at least 30% off your Simply Safe security system. Um, what else was there? Oh, merchandise. A lot of people really enjoy buying t-shirts, hoodies, caps. Uh, we got tumblers. We got koozies, we got all kinds of stuff on the website over at Farm Focused. There's a link down below if you guys are interested in getting anything before Christmas. 
I suggest doing it right now because there's going to be some shipping issues and some availability issues with some of the merch. So make sure you jump on top of that. That's it. That, those are my shameless plugs. All right, thank you guys very, very much. Morning, Anna. Morning, Didge. This would be a good day to get some fertilizer going. With the John Deere 2510S, the strip tiller rig that we've got set up, we're gonna need to refill fertilizer. A little rough there. Multiple times per day. So it works best if we've got our own tender truck, which we don't have our own tender truck, but the co-op that we work with on a fertilizer, they will allow us to fill the tender truck up, bring it out here ourselves so we can refill ourselves. Makes it a little bit easier for everybody. They're lifting sugar beets over there. There are sugar beets around us in almost every direction, but right in our area for 20 or 30 miles right in our area. We just can't grow them. We've got too many rocks, unfortunately, or fortunately, depending on the year. Now this trailer's not full of fertilizer yet. I've actually got to run a couple miles east here and get it filled up. It was just sitting out here at one of their spots. But it's nice of the co-op to let us use it. I mean, they're, they're charging us a little bit for it, but I mean, we need it. It works out well for us. It's really, really handy just to have it there. So uh, thanks to them for letting us do it this way. We have talked about getting our own tender truck and maybe even storing our own fertilizer, but that hasn't happened at this point anyway, but it has been in the talks. Now, other than getting the anhydrous line connected to everything here, which is proving to be very difficult as far as getting the connections actually together, there's gotta be a trick to it. I just don't know it. But other than that, I just have to get the computers programmed, get the controllers uh, up on the screens the way I want them. And I don't know how to do that. So that's kind of my first goal. Yes, got it. Okay, so I'm in a 9570RT. Yes, right. It's been an hour and a half or two hours now. I got the rate controllers on there. Finally got a hold of the precision line. But now, half the other stuff just isn't working. It's like there's not power to it. I can't get Wi-Fi signal from the blockage monitors. I don't have power to the backup cameras and I don't know why. But just a heads up, since I can't throw this entire machine like I wanted to last year and already kind of want to do, I might throw the camera. If I were to just hook traditional tillage up to this machine, I'd have 50 acres done by now. Plus I would have saved like $80,000. I did figure out how to run the switch on there for calibrations to turn it over, but I don't feel confident in my abilities to actually run the new Gen 4 monitors for calibrating this stuff. And I need help hooking the hose up for the NH3 because I can't get that hooked. Yeah, I figured the line out in the back. Maybe I'll get this one. I'll get this one. Oh, it's gonna work. Yep. That's the trick. Now I got it on film for next time. I gotta thank a guy on Instagram for giving me that tip right, right there, that little pointer. Ugh. I had a lot of little tips and pointers, but that was the only one that made sense. I am really super tempted to put, put a couple hundred pounds of fertilizer in or a thousand pounds of fertilizer in each tank and See if I can calibrate it. Right. Awesome. We got it going. Thanks, Daryl. We finished corn yesterday, actually, so now we're just scrambling on tillage before Wednesday happens. Found my issues with the backup cameras and the Wi-Fi box that can communicates with the iPad for the blockage monitors. It's just a fuse, which I was suspecting, but I honestly, I didn't know where the fuse box was in that tractor.
May as well take a whole bunch of spares. And now I'm feeling so fantastic about things, I'm gonna put a little fertilizer in there, even though Dad told me not to, and I'm just gonna figure it out. Or get really upset with myself. Now, I just need to figure out how to run someone else's trailer. Shouldn't be too tough. Killed her. I actually lined that up pretty good. Not because I'm good, but because I had dumb luck. Just just a little bit here. So that is our potash or our potassium going in. I don't want to fill it completely full in case we'd have an issue. But it seems like I got things working anyway. We'll go about half full. I don't really want to not fill it enough and then not get things, you know, I may as well knock some acres out if it's going good. Now in the back bin here, I gotta get over this way some, we're gonna be putting MAP or monoammonium phosphate, which is basically, it's a phosphorus fertilizer. It's, uh, it's an 11520 is the analysis on that. Meaning 11 parts of nitrogen, 52 parts of phosphorus, no potassium in it. Yes, that's only 63% of the product. The rest is known as inert material. Boy, I hope this works. Almost forgot one of the coolest features of this thing. The jump drive. The USB drive that holds the fertilizer recommendations for our fields because this thing is going to apply variable rate for both of those products that I just put in and we need to have a prescription written because it knows what field we're on and exactly where we're at at all times. It's going to put more fertilizer where we need more and it's going to put less where we need less. The only trick though is guess what, I, I'm not entirely sure that I'm fully confident on just how to do this on these new monitors yet. Learning. Oh no, look at my intelligent egg recon system has alerted me that that there is no product flowing through the tubes. But now I can see product in each of the tanks. As frustrating as this thing is a lot of the time, I'm really excited to someday have this thing working perfectly. Get all our fertilizer down in one pass, variable rate. I mean, there's no reason we can't do this. Okay. Older selected Gen 4, 37 prescriptions, so I'll import all those. Yeah, first bin product, that's the field. All right, well thank you to the precision hotline set up through Midwest Machinery. I was walked through that process, which was relatively simple. We set up some more fun stuff for our, uh, for our pages here. Now I gotta calibrate everything. I believe I gotta allow access to the meters something else that I just remembered. Uh oh. Yeah, I already charged the meters before I had access, so I think I filled them tight. No big deal. I'll just drive out in the soybean field to dump a little bit there. The guys out in the Dakotas, Montana, Canada, where they use these systems all the time for seeding, they're all laughing at me right now. So you guys go ahead and laugh it up. Meters 
are charged clear. Hydraulic flow two motors. Uh, unit seven from four, four three about that. I've been on the phone. Well, it's a little tough to see from here, but the meter is spinning and it is running a calibration. So I gave it my desired rate, my desired speed, and how many pounds roughly I wanted to run for the test. So now I'll go see what the actual weight was and let the computer know whether it was correct or not. And then we'll get a desired or a, uh, an actual calibration number so it knows exactly what this product weighs so that it makes sure we are applying exactly the amount that we want to apply. I got these handy calibration chutes here that strap right onto the meters from Green Valley Equipment. Where are we at here? Now I know this bucket empty weighed two pounds. We've got almost 29 in there now. About 26 and a half pounds of product added to the bucket. The machine thought it pumped out 25.3, so it was off by one pound over about 25. Actual amount applied was 26.5. Now we'll get a new value. There we go. Now we run the same thing for tank two, product number two. Calibrate that. I've got everything set to manual here, just to run a test. I'm out in a soybean field that needs fertilizer anyway. I'm gonna try it. So it seems like I've got everything running, but I can't set up a guidance line. You know what? I need a, I need a different receiver anyway. I need RTK receiver because I need this to be as accurate as possible. So, Becky's going to bring Onyx down. I need her to swap receivers with us. She's not going to answer right now. She'll call back. Let's see if I can put fertilizer in the ground. So I need my master switch on. There she is. Hello. Now we'll see if this thing will put some fertilizer in the ground when I drive. No? Oh, that's very, very slow moving. I'm gonna have to speed that hydraulic up. Are we moving fertilizer? I figured out why. Because the master switch was not on. Now, let's push some fertilizer. No speed detected. Take one. You've got real long rounds right now. I don't need them, but they're going to start getting a little fan speed. You can turn around when you get to where you need to pick up. I need you guys to be quiet right now. Uh, fan speed. Up. I think we're working. Here's our target rate. 50 and 60 pounds. Here's our application. It's going to bounce up and down a pound or two. Here's our blockage monitors. Here's our behind us. If I switch here, I can see inside the tanks. I am not applying any anhydrous. I've got a predefined rate of zero. Let's go check our depth here, but I'm getting excited. I think we're going plenty deep, but I'm told we want to. And this has been already tilled a week ago, so it's going to be softer than normal. I think I'm about seven inches or so, which is consistent with where I was last year, as it should be, so. And I can run my little test boxes here, which spins the meters. And then I can watch manually and make sure. Look at that. It's, it's like everything's working. I don't think I've ever had that before. Well, now that I have the P and K all worked out, the final thing to do is to get uh, anhydrous going. But first, now I gotta grab the fuel tank. I gotta grab Thunder and head down and fuel up Jim. Bring Onyx down, grab a receiver. It's one of those days that does not feel very productive. It's frustrating, but you know, it's all stuff that needs to be done. Onyx. A little sticky out here. We just a little bit, especially on the end, but otherwise it's going pretty good. Yeah, it looks like it. Yeah. We are running the chill chisel plow on corn stalks as well as the ripper just to cover ground faster with that rain coming here in 
two and a half days. We're just trying to knock as much out as we possibly can. Yeah, it's a little bit sticky, but oh, yeah. we got to do it now because it's only going to get worse. <laughs> Wheels, get oh, back. I know it. <laughs> yeah, what do you do? Said he hasn't sheared any bolts. Everything looks good other than a little muddy. What do you do? Doing a good job. Simple as that. At least there's a few people getting something done today. I've got the much more accurate receiver installed on the strip tiller tractor but what I almost forgot was the fact that I need a receiver on the strip till bar as well that way the two receivers communicate with each other they know where the tractor and the implement are they adjust for sway and changes in altitude and degrees and all those fancy words the best way to put it is it's another way to make sure I'm going as straight as possible Without any trucks in or out or anything else going on, it's just kind of like a quiet, gloomy day. Ooh. Now, to just make sure that I kind of know what I'm doing as far as setting those two up to talk to each other. Do you need a ride? Do you need one? I, I'm sorry, I, no. I just can't do it. I can't put a furry dog that sheds everywhere in a brand new tractor or a three-year-old tractor, whatever. Well, once again, and hopefully for the final time today, thank you to the Midwest Machinery Precision Hotline that they set up. I believe that's an AgriSync deal, but that helps out a lot because then they can actually just remotely access my display, walk me through what I need to do to make sure everything's calibrated correctly. Now we got some big time precision going on here. Now, if this all works, I've got one final piece to add to make this whole thing complete. But because it's real dark and cloudy to the west, I'm going to wait. It's really more of a novelty cosmetic thing. There I made the long trek all the way down the driveway. I'm going to start with no NH3, no anhydrous, just so that I can get the everything else going here. Um, okay. Okay, I got my prescription rate on both products. We've got our map. This is going to be the target rates. 4,800 RPM on the fan, 133 and 135 on our target rates currently in this spot. <sighs> However that goes. Masters on, implements down, I gotta put these down as well. sticky out here yet. Are we pushing fertilizer? Yes. Is it the amount it should be? Yes. Am I between the rows? I'm going to show you guys what concerns me a lot about this implement that I might be seeing already is these are the soil conditions we get in the fall. I've been over that many times. Look at those disc blades. I've gone this far. If we don't do this now, it's only going to get wetter. And, you know, you can see it. It's not great, it's just chunky because this is the sticky, heavy, black soils that we have. This is, this is what we deal with. I think it's all working correctly at the moment. I'm going to raise the front discs because I don't think I need them in this bean stubble. And I'm going to move over 15 inches so I'm between the rows from last year because I want to keep those roots in the ground. There we go, five and a half miles an hour. I'd say those strips look much better there. Now I don't have those front discs down. They're not tearing up the mud before the shanks get to them. So I think, you know, if you're running it on cornstalk ground or something where you need those blades, they're probably awesome. But I think they're doing more damage than good right here. So luckily I, we can just pick them up. Variable rate seems to be working. Our recon system's working. Our cameras are on. Now that is cool. It's not going perfect here, but it's going pretty dang good. This tractor is way overkill for this machine. It, I think it would pull it at 15 miles per hour. So I'm driving six miles an hour throttled way back. It's pulling it easy. Little sticky, like I said, but that's all right. 
Got the backup camera to back up to the anhydrous. Now I should be able to switch this. And my camera's gonna die, but ideally now I can use this winch, pull this cable out, hook up to the anhydrous tank here. I need a hitch pin. I kind of overlooked that hitch pin part. That's actually really sweet. Now we got the line here that gets stored here, gets hooked up to the anhydrous tank, but it's gonna be pitch black here in a little bit here. The camera I think makes it look a lot brighter out than it is, but since dad, neither dad nor I have actually pulled an anhydrous tank ourselves in about five years, we are gonna wait until daylight tomorrow to get this thing set up and ready and going. So I'm gonna shut this thing down and actually wait for Jim to get home with the ripper and then I'm gonna take it to the next field I have confirmed that everything other than the actual application of the anhydrous is working in this thing. I'm actually super pumped about that. So I'm gonna shut everything down here because I may as well leave the tractor in the field now that I walked up and down the driveway. I may as well walk back up again. I'm actually really stoked. But for the moment, I guess I'll just go eat some supper. Supper was satisfactory. Back to work. You know, I think I'll just sit here for a few hours and relax. Get a little tillage done. <laughs> Thanks for watching. 